Hello everyone, this is Domina Mara and welcome back to my channel. Today I am recapping my eight day, seven night, week long trip to the Caribbean where I join a hundred plus other kinksters to go to Negril, Jamaica and experience our nudist slash kinky dreams at Hedonism 2. Hedonism 2 is a lifestyle friendly clothing optional beach resort that has gourmet dining, themed nights, as well as nightly entertainment. What better place to have a vacation? vacation with other kinksters than this. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter on my website dominamara.com as well as check out my three YouTube membership tiers after this video. We are okay. Bye girl. See you on the other side. This is the first time I'm joining this group and because there was an opening for a female dominant instructor for the week, I decided to jump in and offer a workshop on what it means to be a dominatrix as well as fire play 101. I also offered two clothing optional yoga sessions on the beach early in the morning to start off our days. There is no direct flight to Montego Bay from Los Angeles, and so I had to take a red eye to New York City and then travel down. Luckily, I was able to sleep on the plane with no hassle. But first, dinner. <gasps> I've never even had black truffle ketchup. Honestly, I would do that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Ugh, that one, that one, that one. Damn. So I got the gin sour and he got the ginger crush. Even the silverware is fancy. And they fold the napkins. Okay, so the pork belly and pork pot stickers. And then we got the lamb that's deeky. And then the Korean fried chicken with the black truffle ketchup. Yeah. The flight to New York was actually very comfortable and an even five hours of flight. By the time we got to our gate, it was actually not too long before we had to board. And then it was another four hours to get to Montego Bay. Fun fact, Delta is now charging for blankets. So unless you're in first class, you better bring your own or bring a card to charge for a blanket. Prior to arriving, you do need to fill out the C5 immigration form. And if you did that online before the flight, you are good to go. We passed so many people on the way into the country because we had already done this and just needed to show our email confirmation. You can do this upon arrival, but why wait in an additional hour line if you don't have to? Another guest had said that they had streamlined their process so much better in the last couple of years, and so she was really happy that it was really quick to get out of the airport. I think AV and I made it out within 20 to 30 minutes max. Also, the black art that was on the walls was spectacular and super colorful. They even had this James Bond vintage poster going on as well as an old Montego Bay stamp painting on the wall. The weather was pretty warm when we arrived, but it wasn't unbearable. It was humid, but not like the Philippines, which is a little bit worse. June through August is actually rainy season, so you do have to prepare for that. There are thunderstorms and lightning that graced us every day, but it was a nice refresher and it actually cooled down everything a few degrees. It also kept some pesky mosquitoes out of the way, even if it's for a short period of time. Outside of the airport, you can actually grab a drink at the bar and some little pastries that are kept warm in an oven. And here's where we met our first and longest lasting friend out of the entire group. We were all waiting for our shuttle to pick us all up. And so a few of us bonded after recognizing our pink slips that we had in order to board the vehicle. Unfortunately, it's not super safe to go wander by yourself throughout the streets of Jamaica, especially if you're not part of a group, but the resorts are many and plenty around. They are distributed throughout the entire coast, as well as building even new ones to this day. We arrived on a Friday since it was before 1 to 2 p.m. There wasn't a lot of rush hour traffic yet, and so we were able to get to 
to the resort in an hour and a half to an hour and 40 minutes. Unfortunately, the group after us caught rush hour and they were stuck in traffic for almost three hours. Also, props to the people who had a layover in Miami because their layover was 20 hours instead of nine. And the people in Dallas who got stuck as well for a little bit. There were a lot of delays happening. I don't really know why, but we lucked out by going to New York first. Check-in eased us into the space and there were mirrors in every room on the ceiling. We got goodie bags and necklaces to identify who we are. Iridescent, I don't want the iridescent. It's favorite color green anyway. Oh damn, look at the LED though. My room was actually in a really good location. It was really close to the gym, the beach tent where we are situated for our, us kingsters, as well as the dining area. Speaking of which, it was time to get some food before they closed off lunch. And this evening was going to be the gala dinner, which is when they go all out in preparation for the weekend and new visitors. The resort does serve food 24 seven. You just need to go to different areas in order to order the type of food that is available. You'll see throughout the entire video that I actually eat at all of the different restaurants and try the different species within those eateries as well. There are multiple pools and the main pools actually have treatment twice a day in order to keep clean and sanitary. Flame is their grill outdoor restaurant that has burgers, jerk chicken, fries, salads, etc. during the day and then at nighttime when it is open, it has a more upscale selection, which includes lamb chops, shahaska steak, crab cakes, and more. More rocks. All the rocks. This rocks. Bruh. I got cute! Blindfold. I don't know what this is, but it says sterile in there. Your plugs, pasties, glow sticks. Oh, for the glow party. Mentos. Oh, that one? It's a strawberry. This is a strawberry. What? Oh, cute. Oh, it's a candle. Ooh, is this for massage? And then we got. <laughs> One of these. Swedish fish? <laughs> Hail Satan. After a nap, we went out to adventure. Oh, I want to steal lightning. Yeah. Wow. This is actually where we were going to be playing throughout the week. We literally had to keep the AC on the entire time that we stayed there because if not, it gets really muggy and all of your items like cameras and lenses would fog up otherwise, which really is not ideal if you want to take photos within the hour because it needs time to defrost outside, which is the lesson we all actually had to learn. But this is what the resort looks like at nighttime. I did go hard the first couple of days and so I had a little bit of a headache when I was teaching my first yoga session, but it was really great because there are like 10 to 12 people that showed up, which is crazy for a nine o'clock stretching on your vacation. So great job and shout out to all of those who attended one and both classes actually. Okay, great time to try the local cuisine. Their jerk chicken was amazing. It was seasoned perfectly and it had this sweet and spicy sauce that wasn't too spicy if you weren't into heat, but just right if you are into that slight sizzle. There's where the gnomes live by the titties. Do I look like I can run? This is a courtyard and for the first couple of nights they actually cleared all this out in order to make it into a dance floor which they set up a DJ table as well as really good speakers and then there were these turbo jet fans that were blowing onto the guests which was awesome. And pieces. No sticks for the pool and the pool area. 
After a couple of rounds of billiards, we actually went to check out the sunset photo shoot shenanigans, which happened pretty much every day from five to seven. There were models that were content creators that were there to collaborate with, as well as photographers of all types of levels. And it was really fun connecting with everyone who just wanted to take amazing kinky photos with the sunset. And then we were sidetracked by this really cute cat that could actually climb trees to try to, you know, grab some birds for lunch or something. This little kitty cat over there. Like, meow meow. This cat get quiet. Oh, there's birdies up there. Ruh -ruh. Oh, <laughs> the birds are like, nope. Go get your lunch, girl. Go get your lunch. The birds are like fleeing. <laughs> so like, bye. Don't freaking jump on this though. That's a good down to like six. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, kitty. Ain't that the truth? You can opt for a romantic dinner on the beach as well as take showers by this cool spiral shell shelter. Okay, so there's a little bit of waves. Ting. Like, yeah, that's my ting. I do the same thing. I told you that I never would. I told you it changed even when I knew I Oh, they, they made a U-turn. Wow, I got God rays. Pain and everything. Mm. Oh, rainbow. Yeah, I'm, where's the end of it? There. Oh, yeah, okay. I wasn't ready to take photos, but we did catch some beautiful sunsets the first day and a double rainbow. What a welcome. Double rainbow. Oh man, I missed the blue crabbo. Oh, here. He's right here. No. I'm not gonna eat. Ugh. There were blue lobsters though. Blue lobsters is great. I took my clothes off to flow because I didn't have any of my fan props or anything out with me. But any clothes work, especially if they're long and flowy. Wow. The colors just kept changing and evolving. There were so many pinks and oranges that went to blues and purples. And eventually the double rainbow did fade away, but it was just so breathtaking. And to be honest, there wasn't any other sunset that was quite like this for the rest of the trip. But I did get to take more photos later on, so stay tuned for that. Wow, wow, wow.
We ended up going to Harry Sons, which was a Japanese teppanyaki restaurant. It had a sushi bar on one side, and then the other side had hibachi. And we did hibachi twice because it was so good the first time. And luckily, every night has a different menu, so that's great for variety. And yeah, there were naughty puns and singing that went along with the entertainment of each chef, and that was really fun. Fun fact, Harry is the British owner of the entire resort, which we got to kind of see from afar later on. Some of the people in our group actually met him previously, and he was there with his wife having a great time. Thing on fire. On to the next day. These mushrooms. Don't eat them. We had lunch at Flame Grill because we got up so late, staying up until four in the morning or five. I can't remember. It's got mermaids. Cute. The reason why we stay up so late is because the nude area, which has a hot tub and a couple of pools, is just popping at night and everybody is just so calm and cool and chill and you just end up talking to people for hours. Like literally hours. I don't know where the time goes or what, but the bar is open at the same time so you just get sucked into a black hole of fun. So as much as I loved returning to Flame for dinner where we had amazing steaks eating outside I was getting eaten alive by mosquitoes under the table they really like light and we had a table by the edge closer to the water again very beautiful but very deadly after that we returned to the beach tent because this was the night of my fire and rope performance I was able to have permission to borrow a submissive from one of the masters that attended the event and it went off really really great Fun fact, after that, the resort entertainment also had fire spinning on the beach, which was hilarious. I was able to watch some of it and then continue to teach my Fire Play 101 class, which was near the beach tent, including a couple demos. The next day was a resting day, and then we tried the Pastafarian Italian restaurant that was right beside the main dining hall. We took a bullwhip cracking class and that inspired me to practice both hands. And then it was time for pony play where we learned how to handle and play games with our ponies. And then it was time for a photo shoot because why not? Who wants to be my little pony? Unfortunately, lobsters are a little bit endangered at this time, so you get fined for hunting and serving lobster, which kind of was a buzzkill because some of the dishes included lobster, but ended up having shrimp instead, which was fine, but unexpected. Well, there's a crab by our door. Yeah! I love the types of people that come to uh, this type of resort. We had a girl who had a bunch of rubber ducks and all she asked was that if you take one, take a photo and send it to her. Got a goth ducky where it bathed in its shadows. And then we met this couple from Kansas and they were really awesome. They had door hangers and were only giving it to people they really liked. And so we picked out this one. It's pretty phenomenal. Tropical places always have the best clouds. All right, so it was boys' night and me. <laughs> we ended up going to the wine bar to try out one of the bottles. This is an extra cost. Those are, those are rattlesnake. But the, bones, the, the, right? The vertebrae. But, but so who's the maker of this? Uh, it was a gift. It was oh, okay. made in England. And we bonded over custom toys, which was awesome. Yeah. During waterboarding class. It was really awesome. There was a foam party happening at the same time we were doing a waterboarding class and there was a wedding happening in the background while people were vlogging each other and doing other shenanigans. That was just such a great juxtaposition within these two lifestyles. This crazy evening, we were gathering at one of the Kingsters hot tubs and they actually closed the beach due to lightning, which was really strange because people saw two small sharks and they didn't even bat an eye on that. But 
Whatever. Those are the rules. We all ended up going to uh, the sushi bar this evening. And it was really cool because most of us took up the entire bar. And it was just really fun to eat and dine together. Our group kept on bonding over the week. And so we just ended up planning stuff together more so than when the week had started. This is the hot tub that we gathered in. It was the Duck Girls and her partner's suite. They also gave us these patches that I showcased previously. This forest area was really cool. It's on the way to the nude hot tub and it has all of these memories that of people and groups that have been here before prior and people who actually passed away who really lived their life fully here and everybody kind of just made their own little plaque and rocks and memorabilia that are hammered to the bamboo that are growing in this area. Oh my God, there's kangaroos. Bamboozled. Yeah. Down for shenanigans. Always. Since it was one of the last days to really embrace this place and go into the ocean and relax, everybody in the group actually wanted to do last minute sunset photos. I wanted a snack because I was like, okay, I hadn't eaten for many hours and I wanted to try the chicken quesadilla that looked really good by pool. And so Avi and I shared that, but afterwards I, was convinced to go grab my cat suit, my body suit, and do a few photos with some of the models there. And I brought out my fire, which contrasted really nicely to the darkening sky. All right, I'm not, I don't have my background for you. <laughs> <laughs> Check on the light a little bit. Yeah. That's really pretty. Do you want the same person? Uh, that evening was the most that we all played together under the beach tent. Literally, there was gangbang. There was also my personal scene uh, with a submissive model that I was able to shoot with as well as just a bunch of really awesome times together and it will forever be remembered in this place. He caught it. This shit was gonna eat me. Um, it looked like I have the pox. Checkout was sad and bittersweet, but actually we were able to say goodbye to all the dancers and entertainers that we connected with, as well as head to the airport with some of our favorite kinksters. And so uh, we had no complaints. I napped pretty hard in the shuttle since we were just so under our hours of minimum sleep per night, but it was all worth it because every single conversation, every connection we made is just super memorable. I made a lot of friends as well as lifestylers that are all over the country and in different places of the world. I got to learn three different torture ties, three ways to waterboard someone, how to crack long bull whips, and how to squirt my first girl, as well as navigating and negotiating in the kink lifestyle space. It only took an hour and a half to an hour and 40 minutes to get to the airport once again and we didn't have a lot of traffic even in the places that should have had traffic. It was pouring rain. The roads were flooded but it still was okay because there were no accidents. That was good. Funny story about Appleton Estate. This is a rum that is prevalent here in Jamaica and I really loved the 12 year. And once I got one of the kingsters hooked on it, that's literally all he would drink and that's all he would also bring me and AV as a sign of drink with me <laughs> so this uh, little clip was a tribute to him the bars and duty free areas were actually pretty nice there was a huge Bob Marley eatery that was a tribute to him they always say one love in Jamaica so that's really cute loving the lion with the crown because you know Leo we have
There were no delays. We even got to tour the Club Mobe area, which you could actually lounge at and have a buffet with open bar. There's a section for no children and with families. So that was really cool and good to know for next time. Waiting at the airport is really nothing when you have people that you know to help pass the time. We actually saw the Appleton State guy at one of our gates and our other friend who was going home on a direct flight. We just kind of had a little bit of a get together before we all had to part ways into our separate gates, but it was just really nice to kind of decompress back into the default world by sharing this last moment together and kind of just seeing each other at a place of departure. We headed to Houston for our layaway. And again, we were actually trying to scoot past the immigration because that line was piling up. Luckily, I had enough time to get through everything as well as recheck our bags because I had to go through security once more and get to our gate with no problem. The flight was only four hours to Houston and then another four hours to Los Angeles. It was a nice break in the travels to kind of stop and admire the sunset as well as eat some snacks our bags and then check them in and then we have going to do security again so fun yeah After that, it was smooth sailing to Los Angeles, and that's kind of the episode for this trip. If you enjoyed my Jamaica recap video, give it a thumbs up, share it so that other people can learn more about hedonism too and kinky Caribbean. Subscribe and click the notification so that you know when I have new collabs like this coming out. I post every Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific time or I live stream. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter on my website, dominamara.com. I'm going to be posting my photos that I took with all of these lovely models from there soon. You can follow my socials at Mara Domina on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, keep it kinky, everyone.